promised you a brave new world. That brave new world is how you do calculus over vector fields. You go, what? Yeah, vector calculus. Well, calculus over vector fields. You what? Okay, the basic question, what's a vector field? You go, I don't know. Let's find out today. So this is just an introduction to vector fields, what they look like, what they do, uh, what they are. So let's start with this. What a vector field is, what a vector field is, is a system of vectors, either in a two-dimensional space or a three-dimensional space, um, that's given by, a, by a, oh, a vector function. So these vector functions are going to give us these things called vector fields. Basically, it's just a system that has a whole bunch of vectors spread across it. So there's a vector at every single point. That's what this is going to be. So what a vector, what a vector field is, is the system of vectors that's described by a vector functions that gives you a specific vector at every single point along that system. You guys get the idea? So we're going to have a whole bunch of arrows pointed in different directions. That's what a vector field does. Okay, well, how, how would it look? So for, for this, um, let's call it R2. Let's, let's see what it looks like in R2. If we're talking about a, a vector field in R2, then what this is going to be given by is some sort of a vector function that gives you a vector in, in R2. Okay, now how about this one? Do you remember the, the notation for for vectors, like the I's and the, and the, so I, J, K. How many do I need for 2D? Just I and J. 3D, I would have I, J, K. So if I'm talking about a, a 2D vector system on, on R2, well, this is going to be something that gives us some I's and something that gives us some J's where P and Q are just whatever functions I want. Well, not I want, but they're given to you. Whatever functions that are defined for you on that plane, that's, that's it. So P and Q are defined on, on your region, on your plane. For R3, we, well, we, we'd have three components, X, Y, and Z. We'd have P and Q, J, and let's call it, oh, what I want to do, R, P, Q, R, makes sense. R, K. Where P, Q, and R are all defined functions over your region. Where P, Q, and R just they're defined functions over whatever region that we are finding the vector field over. So I want to go through just real quickly here, real, real fast. Vector field. What's a vector field? A bunch of vectors. A whole bunch of vectors on a plane right now for us in 2D. Or a whole bunch of vectors on a 3D coordinate system for 3D. All they're doing is saying, well, you're going to have a function that gives you the x component, you're going to have a function that gives you the y component, and you're mashing them together. Or three functions, each that give you the, the x, the y, and the z component, creating for you this vector at every single point in the system. You, you guys see it. These vectors aren't all pointing the same way. Every time we get a value, we potentially have a different looking Vector. I'm going to give you some examples of how vector systems look. So vector systems are given by functions. We're talking just R2 right now because they're a lot easier to draw. R3 gets pretty crazy. I'll show you one simple one. So let me, let me break it down really easily, hopefully. Will that create a vector field? Yes. It's a vector function. It'll give you a vector at every single point. We'll talk about what it looks like in a minute. Uh, we could do this one. Hey, take a look at it. If I plug in points, if I plug in like 1, 2, will it gives me, give me a specific vector? Yeah.
so we got these crazy things. My goodness, they look weird. So, so here's the question. Uh, for, for every single point that I plug in, is it going to give me a specific vector at that point? It's going to give me a whole bunch of vectors on one plane. That's a vector field. That's a system of vectors on, on, a, on a little plane there. That's it. That's the whole idea. Now, do you know what any of these things look like? No. Not a clue. I, I know what that one looks like because it's easy. I've done it before. Uh, but the rest of them, not so much. So how do you get a picture of what these look like? Here's your goal for right now. Get some pictures of what these look like. Here's how you do it. Plug in some points. You're going to start seeing some patterns here very, very quickly about what these things are doing. So plug in a series of points. Do it enough times, and you're going to get a very clear picture of what this vector field actually looks like. And now that you're, you're with me on that one. But here, there's, there's something special. <coughs> Every time you plug in a point, it's going to give you a specific vector. That vector's initial point has to be the point you plug in. Is that clear? So if I plug in 4, 4, I'm going to get a vector. That vector has to initiate at the point 4, 4 and go in the direction that the vector's telling you. I'm going to show you that right now. So let's start with, uh, do you want a note about that, by the way? There's a little, little note here. So how you get a picture of your vector fields, plug in a point. <coughs> what it's going to give you is a specific vector. Plot the vector at the point. And that will give you a clear picture of what these vector fields are really doing. So we're going to start, all honestly, all we're doing for the first half of this lesson is we're, we're plotting points. No, we're plotting vectors. That's, that's all we're doing. Um, after that, we'll talk about what conservative means for vector fields, what potential functions are, and how to find them. It is so easy. You're going to love it. It harkens back to uh, some stuff we did in Chapter 13. So you're going to like it. So first, let's look at our first vector function. Uh, first vector, vector function says, hey, I want you to create a vector at every single point x, y, Based on this, now, I want you to look at that. Do you have any place to plug in numbers there? Do you have any x's? Do you have any y's? No, it just says 2i. At every single point, we get a constant vector. Now, let's, let's remember something here. What's the i give you? Is the i the x direction or the y direction or the z direction? <laughs> And the J and the K. Okay. So let's let's think about it. <coughs> Can you tell me firstly, is this gonna be a, a, a 2D vector field in R2 or a 3D vector field R3? R2. How can you tell that? What's it look like to you? How many how many variables are given in that, that order system. That's going to be an R2. So because we have this x comma y, it says that we're on R2. All we need to do is create for ourselves an xy plane. That's all we got to do. But since you just told me, there's no place to plug in x's or y's. All we're getting is constant vectors. So at every point that we have, we're plugging in the point, but there's nowhere to plug it into. We're getting an output. The output is 2i, no matter what. It's all constant. So this says, um, hey, we got constant. So there's all constant vectors. 2i, like everywhere, at every single point, everywhere. Here's what it means. Hey, plug in 1, uh, plug in 1. One. What are you going to get? 2i. You're always going to be 2i. Well, what's 2i look like? Is that in the x direction, the y direction, or both? Just the x direction. How long? So if this is 1, 1, then this vector would say, hey, starting at that point, I'm doing that. 
I'm going two units long in the X direction. Does that make sense to you? If that makes sense, the rest of it's going to go really, really well to you. I means X direction. J means Y direction. K means Z direction. Are you with me? So if we're on the XY plane, this says that I want you to at every point just create a vector. Where's the vector start? At the point. Where's it go? In the X direction. How far? Two spots. It's doing length two in the X direction. Everywhere. So here I'm going to get the same vector. And here I'm going to get the same vector. And here I'm going to get the same vector. All of these things are going to be two units long starting at whatever point I want. It doesn't matter. They're all constant. They're all two units long. Everywhere. Does that make sense? That's your first vector field. Constant vectors at every point of vector 2i. Magnitude 2 in the direction of the x starting at every point. Show of hands if you're okay with this one, for real. Left siders, yeah or no? Ladies? Okay. Now, how about that one? Do we know what that looks like? No. Let's start plugging in some points here. Now, how about this one? Here, I couldn't plug in anything. It's always going to be 2i. That's just magnitude 2 in the x direction at any given point. This one's going to be changing. Let's see what this does. What we just talked about was, let's plug in some points. Now, I have some ones that are going to, that we're going to plug in. But the first thing I want to think about is, is this going to be an R2 vector field or R3 vector field? R2. Still R2. So x, y means we're in R2. So we got to plug in ordered pairs. X's and Y's, just ordered pairs. Let's start with these ones. Let's do this. Let's do um, 1, 1. We'll do 3, 2. Negative 3, 1. 2, negative 3. And negative 2, negative 1. That should give us a pretty clear picture of what's going on. And we're going to graph them as we plot them. As we, as we make these up, we're going to graph them right down here. So let's see about it. Way vector fields work again, the vector function. You plug in a point, you get out a vector. That vector has to initiate, have its initial point at the point that you plug in. So watch carefully. Let's make sure we get the first ones right. The rest of them are going to go really nicely. Let's plug in 1, 1. 1 for x, 1 for y. Hey, that gives you a place to plug in that point. If I plug in 1, 1, I will get negative i minus j. And now that you're with me on the negative i minus j. If you want to omit the little hats on there, that's fine. I really don't care. Hey, um, let me have your eyes up here. I want to make sure that you see it. Where, where's this, what point did we just plug in? Let's plot that point. So right here at 1, 1, we just plotted that point. Are you listening? This vector has to initiate on the point that you just plug in. Now, where does it go? Hey, uh, what's, what's the i direction again? Everybody, what's the i direction? Come on. X. And what's the, what's the, I said it. What's the j direction? So this says you go negative one unit in the x direction, and you go negative one unit in the y direction. It's basically slope. That's all vectors do is they, they decompose kind of a slope into an x and a y component. So, so look. You start here, 1, 1, the point you plug in. It says you go negative 1 in the x direction, and you go negative 1 in the y direction. And that gives you your terminal point. What's the terminal point? The origin. The origin. So it has a direction. It has a magnitude. It's, it's taking a vector from 1, 1 and moving it to the origin. It's, it has that all the way to the origin. Terminal point is at the origin. Show hands you understand the concept of that one. Let's do the next one. If I plug, and I'm gonna move quick because we're plugging in points, but if you have questions, please stop me. I, this, this has to sink in for you. If I plug in three, two, what's getting plugged in for the X? What number, quickly? What number is getting plugged in for the Y? So this is going to give us negative three I minus two J. Head now that you're with me on that one. What point would this vector initiate at? No, no, it would initiate at the point you're plugging in. What point would this vector initiate at? So at the point 3, 2, which is right here, at the point 3, 2, which is right there, 
I have a vector right there. Okay, I plug in 3, 2. That's 3, 2. I have a vector right there. That's the vector right there. It's got to be from this point. Now, where's it go? X direction. Come on, people, help me out. X direction. Negative 3 in the X direction. And negative 2 in the... Oh, wait. What's that? To the origin. So what this says is that I plug in that point. I have a vector initiating at that point whose terminal point is also the origin. Does that make sense? So it's taking this and creating a vector from here back to the origin. Let's try some more. If I plug in negative 3, 1, negative 3 for x, 1 for y, this would give us positive 3i minus j. Are you with me on that one? We're going to go quite quickly through these. That means that at negative 3, 1, the point that I plugged in, right here, negative 3, 1 is negative 3, 1. It says from that point, create for me a vector. What vector? The one that the function told you. Positive 3 in the x direction, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1 in the y direction. Oh my gosh, it's going back to the? At this point, you might have a really good impression about what this vector field is doing. Can you see what this vector field is doing? You do a couple more just to make sure that you're right. You do one in every quadrant to make sure that you're right. Sometimes it can switch in quadrants, okay? So you, you, you be careful on this stuff. Plug in 2, negative 3. 2 for the x, negative 3 for the y, negative 3 for the y. It says that at negative 2, comma 3, no, it doesn't. At 2, comma, negative 3, I plugged in that point, 2, negative 3. It gave me a vector, negative 2 in the x direction, positive 3 in the y direction, right back to the origin. Are you guys okay with that one? The point you plug in is your initial point. Where you go from there, your vector tells you. It tells you what the terminal point is by just moving along the x and the y. That's all you have to do. This last one, if I plug in negative 2 for the x, I get 2i. If I plug in negative 1 for the y, I get plus J. I plugged in negative 2, negative 1, that's right here, negative 2, negative 1. From there I get myself a vector that initiates at that point, positive 2 in the x direction, right here, and positive 1 in the y direction. Tell me what this vector field does. Tell me. In your own words, what's this vector field do? It takes every point and maps a vector from every point right back to the origin. At this point, you can make it a lot nicer just by understanding the pattern. You go, okay, this point, if I put any random point, all it's going to do is do that. Any random point, I'm going to make a vector back to the origin. You can fill it out just by following the pattern. So what this particular vector field does, it takes a vector from each point and points it all the way down to the origin. That's what's happening. Two fans will be okay with that one. Okay, let's, let's try the, the rest of them and, and then we'll talk about conservative vector fields. So do I know what that one looks like? Nah, no, not a bit. Uh, let's start plugging in some points, though. Um, I have some points that I'd like to plug in. I want to see what those give us. And then I want to plug in some, some more after that. I want to plug in these ones when we're done with it. Can you try right now to plug those points in? Give me a vector for every one of those points. careful on this. When you notice where your x's and your y's are, they can get switched around a little bit, so be careful. Did you make it through at least like two or three of them? Let's see if we're doing it right. I want to, I want to pause you here real quick. Just focus back on the board here. If I plug in 1, 1, 1 for x and 1 for y, 
we should be getting I minus J. Did you guys get I minus J? Yes, no. Yes. 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 Now, where does that vector originate from? What, what's, its, what's its initial point? So from 1, 1, I need to draw myself a vector. Be careful. They don't all point back to the origin. Look where this points. This one says from that point, I want you to go, what's the I mean? One direction. Positive one in the x direction and? So I want to go positive one on the x, negative one on the y, and that's my terminal point. My vector goes from here to there. Is that clear for you on what that, that does? Okay, Let, let's, let's do the next one, let's, let's do this one. Just be careful with it, look what's happening. My x is one, my y is negative one. They're not in order. The, the vector, the, the functions, the, the function of the creator, vector functions, can have x and y's all mixed up. So if my y is negative one, this gives me negative i minus j. Can you see how it's negative i minus j, yes or no? Come on, people, I need your, I need your focus. Are you guys okay with that one where that comes from? So I had this, y is negative one. I put it here, you get negative i. X is 1. I put it here, you get minus J. So at this point, 1, negative 1, I get this vector. This vector says I want you to go in negative 1 in the X direction and negative 1 in the Y direction. Negative 1, negative 1. I have this vector that goes from here to here. With me, yes or no? Yes. Guys in the back, yeah or no? Let's do the next one. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1, well, I get negative i, but I get plus j. Do you see why we get negative i plus j? Head not if you do. Plug in a negative and negative. So at negative 1, negative 1, so this is the point that I just plugged in, negative 1, negative 1. I have this vector that initiates at that point that says I want you going left along the x-axis 1 and positive on the y-axis 1. That's x-axis negative. Y axis positive, that's the terminal point of the vector that initiates right here in this vector field. It's doing that. Are you starting to see the picture? When I put this point right here, what do you think it's going to do? Go up. Up, 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 one. That's what it should do. Let's see if it does. Plug in negative one, one. One for the Y, negative one for the X, up one over 1 has a terminal point of 0, 2. You with me? Are you getting the picture? Now, how about the rest of them? What about these? If I plug in like 1, 2, 2 would be for the y. I'd get 2i. 1 would be for the x minus j. So we're, we're not creating these as components of our vector. We're using these as points to put into the function that creates my vector. So I say, hey, 2 is y. Yeah, you got to plug that in. But the y is the x component here. 1 is x, yeah, but x is the y component. It can get screwy, screwy in there because you're, you're using variables to create vectors. That's what a vector function does. So OK, so at the point 1, 2, that's here. At the point 1, 2, I have a vector. It says, I'm going to move you 2 in the x direction and down 1 in the y direction from that point. 2, 1, 2, down 1. My scale's a little bit off, but hopefully you get the idea. Here, this 2, negative 1. This is my y. So I plug in for my y, I get negative i. Plug in 2 for my x, I get minus 2j. So at 2, negative 1, I have this vector that says I want you to go down, go left 1 along the x, negative along the x, 1 unit, and down 2 along the y. What's happening to the length of the vectors, the magnitude of the vectors that are going out from the origin? What's happening? Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. How about this one? This one's going to be really telling for us. If I plug in 0, negative 2, uh, what variable gets, gets mapped to 0? What, what variable do I plug in for 0? What is that one? And the y should plug in? So this would be negative 2 
I, what would the uh, what would the y component be? Zero. 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 The component. Component. So I plug in zero for my x. I get zero. So at the point zero, negative two, that's right here. I have a vector that says left two along the x direction. How much along the y direction? Nothing. Two units. That's the terminal point of your vector. Here's what's happening with this. What these are, are tangents to these circles. Is exactly what the specter field is creating. That are revolving around these circles as we extend out and out. And so there's, there's these vectors that are tangent to circles all through the vector field. That's what's going on with this thing. Do you guys get it? It's kind of cool. Can you try one? Can you just, just try, try a couple of these things? Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you some points to plug in. I want to see that you put, plug those points in. Try to draw the vectors. It's good for you to try this stuff. Is it hugely important for you to know how to graph vector fields, probably not in the long run, but you need to understand what they look like because the next stuff is important on your concepts, okay? Because we start dealing with conservative and we start do, dealing with uh, divergence and curl. And if you don't know what a vector field kind of looks like, it, it's hard to wrap your head around it. So I want you to, do you guys understand this, this picture? Are you sure? You guys see where all the vectors come from, yeah or no? Yes. Yeah. be excited, this is fun. Try these points. See if you can handle those. Give me the vectors, plot the vectors at the points where these are my initial points, okay? It's gonna create me some vectors. I wanna see what the vector field looks like. So at least, did you get the same vectors that I got? 
So at all those points, those are my initial points, these are my vectors that, that start from these initial points. All you do is plot the points, put the vectors on the points, we're good to go. So let's, let's see about this. So at the point 1, 1, I've got this vector that says, from the point 1, 1, I want you to go positive 1 in the x direction, negative 2 in the y direction. Positive 1, negative 2. Start here from my initial point, make a vector to my terminal point, that's the vector you should have. Do you guys have that vector? Yes, no? Yes. Okay, next one says, I want you to start at the point 2, 3. I want you to draw me a vector that says, I want to go positive 2 in the x direction. One, two, and then negative 6 in the y direction. Three, three. Positive 2, 1, 2, drop down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And create a vector that initiates here, terminates here. Did you guys get that one? Okay, this next one says, at negative one, comma two, right there. Negative one, two. I want you to go left on the x-axis one, down on the y-axis four. Are you getting a picture of what this vector field looks like? What this does is takes every point and makes, makes a vector that crosses the x-axis. And it makes a vector such that the x-axis is right in the middle of that vector. That's what's happening here. So it's twice, it's cutting each of these vectors right in half. So this one, negative 2, negative 1, we're going x-axis, negative 2, y-axis, positive 2, here, negative 3, negative 2. Man, random space. X axis negative three, Y axis positive four, one, two gets me back to the X axis, one, two gets me up a little bit further. And that's what that does every single time. And now that you're okay with that, that's that vector field. That's what that thing looks like. Now, these last two are kind of interesting. I want to take a look at them. And we're going to go quite quickly through them. We're just going to plug in a few points here to get a picture of this, and then we'll extrapolate from it. Are there any questions on these examples before, before I erase that, that picture? Is it making sense? Yeah. Would you say it's pretty easy or pretty hard? Pretty Not too bad. You've got to get a feel for it, right? One of the easier, I think one of the easier things we've done, I told you kind of a downhill part of this for a while. Tell me why I'm just drawing an xy plane for this vector field. Can you please tell me that? Why? Star 2. It's only got x and y variables, so all we got to do is figure out what those points are of the xy plane. Now, things are going to look bad before they get better, because we got like square roots and stuff. I don't want to get kind of nasty. But if we plug this in, we got x and y are both 1, so we're going to have 1 and 1. We're going to have Square root of 2, square root of 2. So 1 over root 2, or 2 root 2 over 2, whatever you want to do. But the point is that starting at 1, 1. We're moving an equal distance from 
that point along the x and along the y both positive. Is it going to the origin, away from the origin? Which it, what's it doing? Away. And directly away. So if I drew a line from here to the point, that vector is going to continue that. So from this point, positive x, we're going to estimate positive x, positive y. That's the vector that we get at that point. Positive x, positive y, the same distance. It's directly away from the origin. That's the key I want you to see there, directly away from the origin. Head out if you're okay with that one. Also, these things are dividing by kind of a magnitude and splitting it up. This right here, these, these vectors are all going to have unit length, guaranteed. And if you try to magnitude that one, you're going to get unit length every single time. Square root, add them, square root, you're going to get one for all of them. So this guy, okay, well, notice how the denominator is going to be the same for 1, negative 1. It's, it's going to be square root of 2. But here are x is 1, and our y is negative 1. So from the point 1, negative 1, I'm getting positive along the x direction, negative along the y direction, but the same length vector. It's doing that directly away. Let's try 2, 1. If I try 2, 1, we're going to get 2 for the x, but we're going to get the square root of 5 for this denominator. You guys see the square root of 5 out of that one? 2 squared plus 1 squared, that's, that's 5 under square root. Plus 1 over the square root of 5j. So at 2 comma 1, I'm going to look, look at what it does. It says, I want you to go twice as far along the x as I do along the, the, the j, twice uh, along the y, from that point, which is twice as much along the x as it is, is along the y. So it's taking the same, hey, from here, go twice this direction and up here. It's right along that line. Same vector, directly away from the origin. And I'll prove to you the last two here. If I plug in 0 and 2, 0 and 2. What's the 0 going for? Come on, stick with me. What's the 0 going for, x or y? And the 2 is going for y. So if I plug in 0, well, I don't, I don't have an x component any longer. That's 0. If I plug in 2 for y, well, let's, let's look at that. This would be 2 for y. Then you'd have 0 plus 2 squared and a square root. What's it going to give you? Try again. This would give me 2. This would give me square root of 2 squared. Try again. J. 1, J. So at the point 0, 2, I'm getting something that says, I want you to go one unit straight up the y-axis that this thing is on. <coughs> has a magnitude of 1. Same thing would happen here. I get 3 for the x, but over the square root of 3 squared, that's 9. That's just going to give me i. That's all it's going to give me. So at 3, 0, I'm getting i. At this point, you can take any point, make a unit 1, or magnitude 1 vector, and just move it away from the, move it away from the origin. That's what that vector field starts to look like. And if we do a vector at every single point that has a magnitude of 1 that's going directly away from the origin, we get a picture of what this vector field does. Is this clearing it up for you? Now, I want to show you something. We're not going to do a whole lot on this one because I want to, I want to show you a couple concepts. Number one, we can start extrapolating from previous vector fields that we've done. For instance, this idea, look, look at this idea. I've got y and x, I get the square root of x squared, y squared. It looks a lot like that. So I'll tell you one thing right now. Because this looks like this, we're going to have unit vectors everywhere. Do you guys see that? But also because it looks a lot like the one we did here. Do you see how it has that, that yi minus xj? yi minus xj, that idea. This guy was those tangent vectors to the circle that looked like this. That's also what this guy's going to do. It's only that while this, the, 
the vectors grew as I went outward. These ones aren't going to do that. So this is a compilation of two ideas. First one is, these are tangent vectors. We have that yi minus xj. It's going to look really similar to this. But also, we have the magnitude idea, which is giving us a, a, a magnitude of 1, much like that. So this vector field, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have vectors that are tangent to circles. But all of these vectors are going to have a magnitude of 1. So they don't start growing out here. They just have a magnitude of 1 the whole way around. And they sometimes make some really pretty things. I think the vector fields look kind of cool. Listen, uh, that, that gets a little strange for some people. Do you understand the idea that if you've done a couple vector fields that look really similar to something you have, you probably have some similarities. It's, it's a combination of two ideas. Can you guys see it? Can you guys see the, the whole circle thing like that? Can you see the whole magnitude of one thing like this? And not if you can't see that. They're going around a circle, they're magnitude one, that's what's happening. Uh, the last vector field before we start talking about conservative is, is this one. I've got to show you an R3. Now i got to tell you, when you start talking about the, the R3 vector fields, things can get really nasty really fast uh, because they're hard to graph, they're hard to think about. So I'm going to give you an easy one. You can do them, but let's just think about this one. Firstly, can you tell that it's going to be R3, yeah or no? Yes. Yeah, why? Why? Why can you tell that? Yeah, and it's got a K component. I mean, shoot, we got, we got Z's K. Now, how about this one? Look at the vector function that's creating our vector field. Does it have any i's or j's in it? No. So these things are going to be constant as far as i's and j's concerned. It's just going to be traveling in what direction? The k direction. It's just going to be giving us vectors that are shooting straight up parallel to the z axis. Does that make sense? Now, how about that? When I plug in like a plug in a point. What's going to happen as I travel along the z-axis? So from right here, when I plug in, let's say, like 114 or 117, the 1, 1 has nothing to do with it. But the z component, check this out. I plug in bigger values of z, what happens to the vector? It gets bigger, but they're all going to be parallel to the z. There's, there's only a k component. So at every point, what happens is I get these vectors that are parallel to the z-axis, and as they get higher up, they start growing. As they get lower down, they start shrinking. Get on an axis, well, z0, I, I have the zero vector there. Negative, negatives count. So as I keep going down here, these vectors are getting bigger and bigger as I, as I go further down below the, the xy plane. So this has a a vector parallel to the z-axis, either positive or above the xy plane, going upwards, or negative or below, zero if we're on it, where as we get higher above the xy plane, these things get larger, and as we get below the xy plane, <coughs> further down, they get larger in the opposite direction. That's what that looks like. You can have these, these upward or downward facing vectors at every single point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. You guys ready for a trip? This is actually more interesting than what we did, even though that was pretty cool. Did you understand the idea? Okay, so tell me, what are, what are vector fields? You, you should know at this point, what are vector fields? It's a, don't say series, it's a system. A system of vectors. How do you find the vectors? What do you do? Where's the initial point of every single one of these vectors? Where, where is it? No, not the origin. It's the point you plug in. That's the initial point. And the vector goes along the x, y, and or z direction and gives you a vector from that point to a terminal point somewhere out there. That's what happens. You do it enough times, you get a pattern, start creating some pretty cool looking pictures. Now, where our transition comes is we start talking about the vector fields, what they do, how we can work with them. What's the calculus on vector fields? That's what this chapter's all about. We're going to start doing that. Where it starts, just a little starting spot, is this question. What is that?
<laughs> and that? Great. You're right, you're right. This is this is the gradient. Now what in the world would a gradient have to do with freaking vector fields? What would what would a gradient wait, what would a gradient have to do with vector fields? Can you uh, can you do something for me? Just a, man, it's just some practice. You got a test coming up, so you should know you should know how to do this. Can you please find me the gradient for that function? Find me the gradient for that function. Do you remember how to do it? Yeah. Partial with respect to every variable? Yes, very good. Well said. Partials with respect to every variable, and then you just put an I. Oh, crap. An I, a J, and a K. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's coming back to me. I know that this was the partial derivative of X, I, plus the partial derivative with respect to Y, J. And if we had a, a Z, we do partial derivative with respect to Z, K. K. Does that, is that coming back to you? Yeah. You're not excited. This is gonna be exciting. This is cool. Like what? That's crazy. Find the gradient. Way so way more much better. I'm gonna start actually making gradient make sense. I already make it sense, but more sense, more better. Find the gradient of this. Find the, find the gradient of this, and we get. Come on, you should have done it. Uh, what's what's the gradient? What what do we have here? Partial derivative with respect to x gives us what? Two x. Two x. I. Very good. And then partial derivative with respect to y, and then we mash a j after it. What's the y thing give us? Parentheses x squared, squared minus y squared minus y squared. J. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That looks like functions with like x's and y's and stuff, like an i next to it. And that looks like functions with like x and y and stuff, with like a j next to it. But wait a minute. That looks like functions with x's and y's and stuff, with like an i next to it. And that's like a function with x's and y's with like a j. Tell me what every gradient ever, ever makes for you. <coughs> it is a vector. In fact, we knew it from before. We knew that the gradient, verified, gradient is a vector. Yes, no? And the, the, the gradient gave us a specific vector for a specific point. A vector field gives us a specific vector at a specific point. A gradient is a type of vector field. It already creates a vector at every single point. It was our very first vector field. This is a vector field. At each point x, y, there would be a vector, the gradient at x, y. So let's, let's, if it didn't sink in, it's got to sink in. Function, yeah. Gradient to function, true or false? Gradients create vectors. True or false? Gradients create vectors that change at every single point. So when I plug in a point, I get a specific vector. Vector field. It is a vector field. It's a very specific type of vector field. In, in fact, Here's what we say. Here's what we say. If we find a vector field, and it is the gradient of some given function, that vector field we find is called a conservative vector field. Why is it important? We'll talk about throughout the course of this chapter why it's important. I'll give you a rundown here in just a little while. But here's the definition for what we call a conservative vector field. Let's call that a vector field. F, big F, of x, y is a conservative vector field This is a conservative vector field
if if that vector field equals the gradient of some function Say that one more time. We call a vector field conservative if the vector field stems from the gradient of some other function. Are, are you guys getting the, the picture here? So what, what lets us know whether we have a conservative vector field or not? The gradient. The gradient. If it's the gradient of some other function, it's a conservative vector field. The function that we get the gradient from, which gives us a conservative vector field. So we got these things that are conservative if they're gradients of some other function. The some other function where we get the gradient, where we get the conservative vector field, is called a potential function. F of xy would be called a potential function. Now, why the, why the weird words, man? Why potential function and, and conservative vector fields, why? Well, because when we have these potential functions and conservative vector fields, we start talking about stuff like the law of conservation of, of energy, where we have these potential systems, and from them we get this, these energy fields, and we have and we have conservative vector con law of conservation of energy. We start talking about these things in a lot of your physics and engineering classes where you have conservative vector fields or conservative fe things like that. We can start talking about certain cases like conservation of energy. And so we have some of these words from potential functions. You guys have seen some, some, hopefully some ideas come together. That, that's important stuff. So in our previous example, Right here, if we, if we had just done this, said, hey, um, let's make a vector field equal to 2xyi plus x squared minus 3y squared j. Like that. Would this be a conservative vector field? Yes or no? Yes. First, let's say this would have, would have been a vector field. Is this a vector field? Does it give me a vector at every single point on a 2D R2 surface. Yes. Okay. Does this vector field stem from the gradient of some other function? Yes. So this is a conservative vector field. Sorry for the abbreviation. Is a conservative vector field of the what, what's it coming from? What function is it coming from? Can you see where it's coming from? Of this What's that function called? If we're getting a, a gradient, which is a conservative vector field, if we're getting a conservative vector field from it, what's that function called? Yes. So this, because it stems from the gradient, because it is the gradient, this vector function is the gradient of some other function. This vector function is conservative. It's the gradient of some potential function. So what's it come down to? How do you, <laughs> what's it come down to? How do you find conservative vector fields? That's it. It's literally it. Just the gradient. You don't even have to go backwards. I give you a potential function. Can you find me a conservative vector field? Let's do it. So here's your here's your question. Uh, homework question comes straight out of here. People get all jacked up on Mountain Dew about it. They go, I don't know how to do that. This is crazy. Um, so here's the wording so you don't get lost. I want you to find the conservative vector field. It's amazing how simple this stuff becomes when you actually understand it. When you see where it comes from, you go, what's conservative mean? It means it's a gradient. What's potential function mean? It, it means the function I'm supposed to take the gradient of to find the conservative vector field. That's what this stuff is, is, is talking about here. So find the conservative vector field. <laughs> for the function this one
let's just diagnose the problem here real quick, and then uh, and then I'm gonna have to do it shortly. Maybe let's put the answer on the board here a little bit, but let, let's diagnose it. Can you find the conservative vector field from this function? What would give you the conservative vector field to a potential function like that? What would you do? Find the gradient, you automatically find the conservative vector field for a function. So when we find the gradient, we're gonna have to do it quick, so we're gonna run out of time. But if we find the gradient, gradient for, for a function with three variables is partial x, partial y, partial z with i, j, k pluses respectively. Even kind of rhymes, kind of like that. Always take advice that rhymes. Did you know that? <laughs> Don't go to bed with a snake by your head. It's good advice. Just brilliant. No? I just made that one up. It's good advice though. Right? Sorry, is it too much? A little, little bit late for stupid jokes. Yeah. You should be working as I'm rambling. Are you working as I'm rambling? No, just listen to your rambling. If we take the partial derivative of this thing with respect to x, you get 1 over a bunch of junk. Chain rule gives you 1 times y. y over x plus z, i. If you take this with respect to y, the partial derivative with respect to y, and then put a j next to it. This one's real nice, because with respect to y, this just becomes ln x plus z, j. Are you with me on the partial derivatives? Do you remember partial derivatives? Yes. Plus, last one. Take the partial derivative with respect to z. It says, okay, leave the y alone. I'm going to have 1 over this. Chain rule gives us another 1. So we have y, x plus z. Okay, this was partial x. This is partial y. This is partial z. That's where those things came from. What is, for all the stuff, what, what, it, what is this? What is this? Gradient, I know it's the gradient. What's it mean in terms of what we're doing here? What's it mean? It's a vector field. What's, what type of vector field? This is, this is the conservative vector field. Oops. That is the conservative vector field that we're looking for. This is the conservative vector field for this function, and it's given to you by the gradient. So what we should get out of this lesson is that... Um, to find out what vector fields look like, plot points at every point, put the vector at that point, initiated from that point. After that, we should be getting that gradients are vector fields. In fact, they are conservative vector fields, and that goes into a lot of the stuff that we're going to do later in this class. Did today make sense? Yes. Okay.